The IRCC estimates that Canada resettles one in every 10 refugees in the world. In relation to refugees, uh, settlement and integration costs for the Canadian government uh, equal to approximately $1.1 billion per year. So in the context of this, my HRE asks whether the socioeconomic characteristics of a refugee impact their level of integration into Can Canada's workforce. And if so, which factors are most significant in determining their integration, which I define in my HRE as level of earnings. This study will differ from much of the research already undertaken in this area because it rec recognizes and focuses on uh, the subgroups present within the category of refugee and how these subgroups differ in their integration within the Canadian labor market. So my first um, factor was category of refugee. The data demonstrates that there certainly is a divergence between different categories of refugee entrants. The average income of all immigrants is higher than the average income of any of the four uh, refugee classes, of course. Um, this is to be expected because this includes economic migrants. Interestingly though, ICAS applicants or asylum seekers uh, earned the most among all refugee classes since the year 2000. The literature shows that source country also does, ha does have the potential to have an effect on earnings. Um, the data agrees with this, but also shows that incomes of refugees from all origin areas really began to converge around the turn of the millennium. The difference between the highest performers and the lowest diminished from a peak of $20,000 in 1991 to approximately $3,000 in 2014. The data shows that time spent in Canada also generally correlates with higher incomes for refugees. So those in Canada for 20 years earn approximately three times higher than those who have just arrived, which shows that time spent might be the most significant factor in determining refugee incomes. Uh, the data also supports the general gender patterns on earnings, showing that male refugees easily out-earn female refugees. What's interesting, though, is that uh, male government-assisted refugees, or GARs, earned the highest incomes in the beginning of the 1990s. But in the latest data in 2014, male GARs are the lowest performing refugee category. For females, it was the privately sponsored refugees that used to earn the most, but since 2000, there hasn't been a significant amount of variance between the categories. And just as with the rest of the labor market, the literature shows that education can play a major role in determining labor market participation rates for refugees. Um, the data demonstrates that refugees with bachelor's degrees or higher earn the most. Um, this is unsurprising. However, all education types show a convergence towards a diminished difference in incomes between these education levels. Uh, and what's interesting is that in 2008, refugees with no education overtook those with uh, grade school and high school education. So that's just a brief overview of the factors I examined. Um, given that the Canadian government spends over a billion dollars per year on refugee uh, integration and resettlement, Canada can benefit greatly from increased knowledge in this area. So these results, when taking them in the context of Canadian policy and the services they offer, uh, can be helpful in further improving the effectiveness of integration services for refugees in Canada. Thank you.